In this video, we're gonna have a look at the new LilyGo T-Deck Pro um, and do a quick comparison to the other T-Decks available. Um, so it's got an ESP32 S3, LoRa, GPS, and e-paper display. Um, so the case is pretty sand for LilyGo. Uh, it's a nice case. Let's just zoom in. So that's the e ink display there, and it's a touch screen as well. So it's got a transparent case, which looks quite nice. Uh, on this side here, you've got, I think, the boot, a reset button, um, a connector, it's a USB C, and then you've got this one here is for the SIM card and SD card as well. And to turn this on, you actually have to plug a USB-C in initially. So let's plug it in. And just pull that out. So yeah, that's just what that says there. I'll just take the screen protector off as well. So it looks quite nice, uh, it feels good in the hand. So it just feels like having a, I guess, a cell phone or something in your hand. Um, there's no rough bits or things that poke out. So it feels nice. Um, if you want to put that in your pocket, it's going to feel fine. Um, so this one has um, a 1400 milliamp hour battery. In comparison to the previous models. So just having a quick look, we've got just the original T-Deck, um, which you have to build yourself, um, get a case for it, put a battery in. So it's pretty much a, a DIY, DIY project. Um, this one here is the LilyGo Plus. So it's quite nice. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, this one here has got an external antenna, but stock comes just with um, in, in, internal antenna but yeah it's got the the spots to actually put an external antenna if you want to so this one's got Bruce firmware and this one's just got the mesh tastic on it so yeah it'll be interesting to see what firmware is available for this um, in the future so it's a very new product so there's no I don't think there's any think available for it yet besides the, the stock firmware that comes on it um, so it'd be nice to have mesh tastic at least on this one. Um, I think the main benefit of having an e-paper display is just the visibility, especially in the light. So I really like um, this is another mesh tastic device. It's the, the T Echo, um, which I've got into a, a custom like 3D case. But in the sun, like I can see that display really easily. So if you're using it for mesh tastic, um, an e-paper display would be really like good for the in in the light. Um, so they've got other things that you can do for it as well. I think it's got uh, a gyroscope in here as well. So if we go into input, so it's got a gyroscope. It's got a light sensor, and the touch is just I think where you're touching it on the display just to show. So if I move it, are we changing? Um, it's also got um sorry, uh, audio jack port there, so you can put I guess connect up uh, headphones or something to it. And you've got, I think this is a quick audio check. Which doesn't seem to be working. So yeah, it's got a speaker in there. Um, just because it's got the, I guess that's another thing to keep in mind is with the like e-paper display, I've found most of the devices that have it are a little bit slow. So it's just, just the way they are. So it might feel a bit laggy compared to having something that's got like a an LCD display that's quite quick and snappy. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so hopefully Meshtastic and even 
maybe Bruce firmware or something can be ported to it, but that's, you know, something that we'd have to just wait and see if that's going to be available or not. Um, so you got your LoRa that comes stock with the fit, like the inbuilt firmware. Um, I don't have another device that runs off LoRa to test it with. But yeah, it's not too bad. Like it's still usable, but yeah, you just have to um, keep that in mind when you're um, looking at this device that it's it's not going to be as snappy as something like um, with a LCD display, but it's going to be more power efficient. So I think that's why they can probably get away with a 1400 um, milliamp hour battery. Uh, I've only just got it today, so I haven't been able to test to see how long it actually lasts for. Um, and also it depends on the firmware that's going to be running on it. So it's sort of very new at the moment, but it's it's promising. The only thing that I wish um, it had was an actual physical switch to turn on and off. Um, so the, the older ones, they have a switch that you can turn on and off. So I think the issue is if I turn this, if I um, press shut down and I hold on the boot, it won't actually start it up again. I actually have to connect the USB-C into it to actually get it to um, start up again. So I don't know if that's a firmware based issue or not. Um, and if it can be resolved, if we like running off Meshtastic or something or Bruce. So this is just a size comparison. So we've got the Plus and we've got the Pro here. So they're probably going to be for different use cases anyway. So this one's got, um, it's also got 4G as well. Um, so you can do like mobile um, phone stuff with it. Um, so yeah, it really depends on what you want to use it for. So if it's for Meshtastic and they have the firmware available, um, that might be a really good use case for this. But yeah, it's sort of, in the works at the moment, so I think this, the display of the e-ink is a little bit larger than the actual LCD as well, the plus, so that's something to keep in mind. You don't have the trackball, it's all, you know, touch screen or the keypad. Uh, the keypads feel quite nice, so they're a bit more recessed. Oh, not recess, sorry, they're a bit higher than the actual device, so it's got a nice feel to it when you press it, as opposed to the ones on this, it's like quite flat um, and it's more uniform, but I find it a little bit more tricky to actually use. So that's a nice addition to it. Yeah, also like holding this in your hand, it doesn't feel nice, it doesn't feel like it's... Um, really designed to be held like compared to this so this is more designed like a I guess like a cell phone that's really just nice to hold or you know slip in your pocket um, being that it doesn't have an external antenna um, it'd be interesting to see how well the the range is if you're going to use it for meshtastic um, so that's another thing you know once hopefully the firmware is available for meshtastic then we can actually test it out and see how um, good the range is and if it's actually going to be a, a good usable device for that um, purpose. But yeah, let's just a quick look at the T-Deck Pro. Um, so hopefully in the future um, more firmware is going to be available for it um, and then you can I guess make your decision if you want to make the purchase or you want to go for the, the Pro that's already established um, so you can run Meshtastic on this and you can run Bruce firmware um, and same with the, the standard T-Deck as well if you wanted to just make one from scratch. So yeah, let's just quick look at the new T-Deck Pro. Um, hopefully the video has been a little bit helpful. Um, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.